we had young children and we were not prepared to uh, place them in schools which were segregated. And uh, when we saw what the school situation here was, that was pretty much uh, the course on which we were set until a couple of other friends approached us and asked if we change our mind if there were a Quaker school available for our children that did not segregate. We do stand out in this community and in North Carolina in so far as the public schools are very constrained in what they can do and how they do it. Friends School has avoided that particular restriction. Uh, we're free to choose teachers who are themselves engaged in learning. And then we grant these teachers freedom to explore new ways in which to transmit what it is that they feel is important to their students. And then, of course, there's the uh, philosophic twist, which um, sets us apart from public schools, which quite properly... Uh, Friends school students are doing good things, and I think the school has been an example. Teachers have come out and, and done, done workshops out here, have, have worked one-on-one -on -one with, with other teachers in the school. Philanthropy gives us this wonderful school and the satisfaction of seeing it grow from a very, very small unit 50, almost 50 years ago to the large and thriving community that it is now. I don't think either one of us thinks of Friends School as an object of philanthropy, frankly. It's, it's more like a child. <laughs> In fact, a while ago, um, one of our daughters wrote a piece about the school, and she titled her, her little piece, My Sister, the School. <laughs> philanthropy is literally the love of other humans. What more does one have to say?